As you know, from day one, our government has been working diligently to ensure that Canadians have the equipment and the supplies that they need to see this pandemic through to the other side. Now, as a result of Canada's bilateral agreements with the world's most promising vaccine developers, Canada is charting its path forward towards recovery. Le Canada s'est doté d'un l'un des portfolios de Canada has a wide range of portfolios of diversified vaccines, night, vaccines, the most in the world. I had the privilege to be on hand as some of the first COVID-19 vaccines arrived in this country. That shipment was part of the first 30,000 doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech authorized vaccine. More shipments will follow shortly, with up to a total of 249,600 doses arriving by the end of this month alone. This is the first tranche of the 20 million doses that we have purchased from Pfizer to date. Notably, our vaccine portfolio consists of signed agreements with seven vaccine manufacturers that will provide us with access to up to 414 million doses, the most number of doses per capita of any country in the world. In addition to executing the advanced purchase agreements with vaccine developers, my department at PSBC continues to support the logistic side of the largest mass vaccination effort in Canadian history. I'm pleased to announce today that we have awarded standing offers to five Canadian companies to deliver tens of thousands of kilograms of dry ice weekly on an as-needed basis for storing vaccines at various temperatures. A key component of our contracts is that provinces and territories must be able to issue call-ups against these offers directly so that they too can quickly meet their immediate storage needs without delay. And we are pleased to be able to support the provinces and territories in this regard. Now for an update on freezers. When it comes to transporting and storing vaccines, we have now purchased 422 freezers, including 148 portable and 130 countertop freezers, as well as 322 ultra-cold freezers that can store vaccines at up to minus 80 degrees Celsius to accommodate the Pfizer vaccine. So far, we have received a total of 42 freezers with more on the way this week and in the coming weeks. As you know, and as you mentioned, pandemics know no borders. And this pandemic continues to have a profound effect for vulnerable populations at home and around the world. And we will not be safe until everyone is safe. So it makes sense that when we find successful medical solutions, we, should, we ensure that it is a win for all. Since the start of the pandemic, our government has been committed to a robust global effort to end COVID-19 and the devastating health, social, and economic effects it has had on the most vulnerable around the world. Canada is doing its part to ensure that everyone, everywhere, has access to COVID-19 tests, treatments, and vaccines. Today, I am pleased to announce that the Government of Canada will contribute $230 million to procure COVID-19 therapies for use in developing countries, responding to urgent needs identified by the Access to COVID-19 Tools Accelerator, or the ACT Accelerator. For this initiative, we are working in close collaboration with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and UNICEF. This contribution will help to reduce the burden the pandemic is having on already stretched health systems in developing countries. It will minimize the number of deaths and cases of severe illness from COVID-19. Canada's contribution will make it possible for UNICEF to acquire up to 3 million courses of novel COVID-19 antibody treatments as soon as clinical trials and regulatory approvals are completed for deployment to developing countries around the world. 
This builds on important work with the Gates Foundation to secure dedicated manufacturing capacity for the production of novel antibody therapies that will be reserved for use in developing countries at low or no cost. The faster we can get tests, treatments, and vaccines out to people, the sooner this global pandemic can be contained. That is why Canada is also investing an additional $255 million to further support the critical work of the ACT Accelerator, which is a framework for collaboration to speed up the development, production, and equitable access to COVID-19 tests, treatments, and vaccines. Uh, if, if all the vaccines were here today, uh, we would still possibly have an issue convincing a lot of Canadians that they're safe, that you can take it, how to take it, what are the instructions. Um, and I'm just wondering if you have a budget for a marketing plan to buy some ads, things like that, to, uh, in order to prepare Canadians for when it's in widespread use to create the demand that we, we all need to take this vaccine and, and that it's safe. Can you speak a bit about the communications or marketing plan to get Canadians all excited about getting this thing? Well, again, thanks for the question, and it is a good one. As we see vaccines rolling out in this country, um, we are confronted with a number of different types of reactions to the vaccine, but I want to start by saying that I have full confidence in Health Canada and the expertise that they bring to the table in terms of the approval of the Pfizer vaccine and additional vaccines that will hopefully be approved. Of course, that's a process that is separate from uh, the procurements, for example. Um, but in terms of how we as a government are addressing the various reactions that individuals have, I believe that all elected representatives have a role to play in supporting scientific research and the decisions that our independent regulator at Health Canada is making. That is why I was concerned when in the official opposition, there was a member of that party uh, that was uh, circulating an anti-vaxxer petition. By the same token, I think we need to make sure that all uh, of us in government who are coming to the table expresses uh, the importance of following the science, ensuring that we have faith in our experts in this area. Um, we do hold technical briefings every week where Health Canada officials are present, where procurement officials are present, and where PHAC officials are present in an effort to provide as much information to the Canadian public that they may seek or want in order to have as much information as possible about the vaccines and perhaps become more comfortable with uh, with the vaccines and taking the vaccines. In addition, I have heard of various uh, efforts uh, among cultural groups in various communities that are speaking directly with their communities, partic in particular the South Asian community, um, to ensure uh, that vaccines are safe and effective once approved by Health Canada. And then I will finally say that what I am focused on in procurement is that the vaccines arrive in this country. It is a cross-government approach to ensure that we have information that is provided to Canadians so that they are uh, comfortable with approved vaccines that are safe and effective. Our government is focused on that. I know that the Minister of Health, Health Patty Haidu, is also focused on that, and I'm sure she will have more to say on that uh, once uh, she's here with me again.